Nigerian Christians told to abandon church going to avoid Islamist violence. In Nigeria, on November 19th, an unknown person delivered a letter to the police headquarters in uh, Gusau, Nigeria. The letter threatened Christians in the Zamfara state and told them not to hold public worship or Sunday services. The letter stated that the penalty for not listening to their demands would result in attacks, abductions, and church burnings. Zamfara State Police Command's spokesperson, Mohammed uh, Shehu, stated that a special task force has been patrolling areas surrounding Christian churches to protect worshipers. According to the police, a particular Fulani association took credit for writing the letter. The Fulani people are a primarily eth Muslim ethnic group that live in West Africa. Director of Communications of the Diocese of Sokoto, Father Chris uh, Omotosho, stated that the church officials in the state have, quote, made no formal statement, but can internal strategies are at work. The Christian Association of Nigeria calls the threat, quote, decisive by declaring war against Christians. Amazing. Amazing. This is what you get with Islam, by the way. I mean, do we get this with any other religion? So, but Hinduism, you get like, okay, if you're in the streets, like not in the mosque, you get like, you might get, you know, you're not going to get violence, but you're going to get harassment, right? Um, but Hindu too. But with Christianity, we never get something like this. We, we're never going to have a news title saying, I don't know, Nigerian Muslims told to abandon mosque going to avoid Christian violence, right? We don't, we're not going to get a new. Um, I don't think that's true. Um, there's okay, lots of me. instances of um, evangelical versus Catholic violence in Central and South America that we've talked about. Um, evangelical versus Catholic? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's, and, yeah, no. Okay. So that's, that's confirms that that's not what I was saying. I was saying like Catholic, okay, I was talking about Christians attack on Muslims because they're Muslim. Well, I mean, we we do have the Crusades. Okay, oh, I'm talking about now. Okay, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also there, that happened, there's like individual. Um, yes, not attack. to the, okay, generally right now, okay. When what about we the get, Christchurch attack? Generally, right now, on average, okay, and also that guy was not a Christian. Anyways, generally right now, I'm just saying that when you hear about violence against, you, you think, what about this? What about this? Like, I'm talking about averages, okay? You don't get violence. When you see violence on religious communities, one religious community, another religious community, it's a safe bet to say it's an Islamic group intimidating or um causing violence on another religious group it's pretty um it's a come on susan it's like number like no no yeah okay. yeah on average percent globally yes it's very yeah, I, it's it, very context dependent but yes in fact it's like the fact that you mentioned christ just shows how unique that it is for it to be other way around for it to become like when it comes to uh, islamic violence it's so common that it doesn't get international coverage. Do you know what I mean? It has to be, for it to get international coverage, it has to be a uniquely rare incident uh, where it is an attack, a violent attack on Muslims. Not that it doesn't deserve the international attention that it gets. It does, it should. But I'm just saying it's a rare relative to... Anyways, I don't want to do... Um, I'm not saying like... okay. People are going to misunderstand what I'm saying. People are going to think like I'm saying attacks on Muslims is not important. It is very important. It needs to get a lot of attention. Well, okay? even the attacks not, on Muslims and I'm not, on average are by other Muslims. Yes, yes, exactly. And that's I'm, also, true. I'm also not trying to play oppression Olympics and be like, like, oh, this yeah. is this, you know, just, you know, I'm not trying to do that. But it's just a fact. It's just a fact that when you see um, violence, religious violence, it's a safe bet to say, well, it's not 100% safe, but you're more likely to be correct if you assume it was an Islamist attack, okay? Like that is, that is just numbers. It's just statistics. It's just numbers. I'm not saying anything controversial here. If people want to keep doing what about is them, what about here, what about here? Yeah, it's true. It exists, but not to the same level. 
it's not to, it's not a, it's not even closely to the same level unless you focus on a specific region right um but yeah globally it's obviously mostly and again it has to do like it cannot it, it, it's not just socioeconomics right uh, the fact that no. islam is like often so involved in, in, in uh, violence means that socioeconomics is a factor, but Islam is also a factor. You cannot, like the nature of the religion, there must be something about the nature of the religion uh, that, ha that has this effect. You know what I mean? Yeah, I want to read a little bit of this letter that was um, handed over to the police. So, um, in the document, members of the Fulani Association who are planning to launch a war against Christian religion claimed responsibility for the anonymous letter. Quote, we want churches to be closed from now to the next three years. If they are not closed, we will start burning them. Those behind the letter threatened and added reference to Christians in Zamfara. Quote, we will follow their pastors to their houses, whether during raining or during the middle of the night and kidnap them and their family. They claimed responsibility for some previous attacks on Nigerians, saying, we have been harming people, but we have forgotten the Christians. So we will start from now until Christmas time. We are going to start uh, with the churches located on the outskirts of uh, Gusau. We are going to start kidnapping the kidnapping of Christians and burning their churches located on the outskirts of the Gusau town. And we are doing it when no one will expect it to happen. We are taking this action because they, the Christians, are the ones that started causing this problem. They harmed our children at the Saminaka area and chased away our cows while rearing behind Karma Hotel. And um, so now there's all these security me measures that are happening um, to protect the Christians in this area, including like plain clothes officers that are doing investigations. Um, and it's... Um, so a statement from the Christian Association of Nigeria said, we know that all kidnappings and other criminalities being perpetrated in the northwestern part of the country are the handiwork of terrorists who either migrated from the northeast or those who were released under the purported rehabilitation program of the federal government, stating no, child, no Christian should be chill, killed in Zamfara. Um, and then they call on the federal authorities and the military authorities to stop turning a blind eye to these kinds of kidnappings and these threats. And basically they point the finger at them for um, the way that they handle these criminals as like wholly unacceptable and um, maybe not punishing them as much as they would other criminals, um, kind of implying that they have a bias towards them because they're Muslim. Um, and um, that they said, we have no problem with Islam or with our Muslim brothers and sisters, but the handful of fanatics and their financiers who have declared a war against Christianity. Um, and um, then they talk, we call on President Muhammad uh, Buhari to sanction any commissioner of police or zonal police commanders and the director of state security services wherever kidnappers operate in the community, in the country, hence force. So basically they're saying that they're not actually holding these people accountable. They're failing to um, prevent these kidnappings and abuse so forth. And then they also ask for the state to take on and help the community refund the community for everything they've had to pay out for kidnapping ransoms. Unbelievable. Interestingly Unbelievable. enough, recently there was an, also an attack on a mosque in Nigeria. Um, so this, we're in, hmm. for this Christian story, this happened in kind of the like Northwest area generally of Nigeria. And then the mosque, um, uh, the mosque killings happened also in the Western area of Nigeria, but a little further South than this town. Hmm. Okay. And, and that has been done by Christians? That attack on the mosque. Um, wait, let me find it really quickly. Um, I, uh, I don't know if it's known who was responsible for it yet. It's um, All right, the attack let's, let's, is the latest fine. escalating violence in the northwestern and north central Nigeria, where armed groups have been targeting remote communities, uh, killings, and abducting residents for ransoms. Um, 
You know, it, this no, is, this this the the attack on the mosque is also a, allegedly done by the same well a, a Fulani group. Oh no! Okay, wow. Um, here's the thing: Nigeria has so much potential. Okay, Nigeria is going to be one of the largest countries in the world by population, and it's growing very fast. Like, um, and there are a lot of talent, a lot of talent coming from Nigeria. And this is a, this is a country could that could be the star of uh, of Africa. You know what I mean? It could be. There's so much people ready there for doing, um, you know, work and bring it, like look at how well the Nigerians do when they go to other countries, right, for education or for like um, high, jobs that require higher expertise. And they bringing and also within Nigeria. Okay, this is a country that is being held back with religious conflict, right? And if it didn't have that, the potentials would be endless. Like, and it could be bring so much wealth, not just to Nigeria, but also to its neighboring countries, you know? So this just, just cut this crap out. Like, look how much these fairy tales, it's just like these religious ideologies, it's just like holding, the countries that are, are need the need to come out of the Stone Age the fastest, right? The countries that I could like um, are showing so much potential. They're being held back the most with this with this nonsense, right? The cost of religion is not just people violence and people being attacked. All of all of this instability is going to affect everybody, not just the victims of the violence or the intimidation. It's going to basically scare away a you know capital and investments and businesses and which will have a, a major positive effect on people's lives and th again these are the people in, on the planet that need it the most okay and again it's not going to just be nigeria if nigeria has a success story it will impact every other country around that region as well it could be a role model of how things should need to be done you know the, all of this potential is just being you know Again, I'm not saying it's going to be wasted because Nigeria is still going to grow. But again, it's just it's just like a barrier. It's just a, such a major barrier to progress. Yeah, I think the issues in Nigeria or also just the Sahel in general are very complicated because there is a very legitimate economic factor behind these issues. And um, what makes it difficult is how people need to acknowledge that there is particularly in this instance with the Fulanis, they have um, economic grievances um, that we can, we can address both, right? We don't have to say it's just this or just that because it's well understood. If you study like socio-historical thought um, or research that uh the worse material conditions you live in, the more likely you are to have deepening fundamentalism in a society because it helps. It, it it's a way to try to provide a, some form of stability or structure in the society. It's a very flawed way to do it. So worsening socioeconomic conditions are going to worsen fundamentalism. However, um, we need to also attribute that when you're saying that you're acknowledging that there is the fundaments that these ideas come from right like that when you're saying oh well it's only the socioeconomic conditions that make the fundamentalism worse you're still talking about and attributing acknowledging that there are very flawed fundaments of a faith that are at play here um did that make sense yeah yeah Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.